the word gap, the language gap. Many of you may have heard of this concept in the media. Based on a seminal book by Hart and Risley in 1995, which discussed how children from lower income households are exposed to 30 million fewer words than those in middle class households, the language gap has become a pervasive part of a national conversation on education, language, class, and inequity. While at first this statement and the numbers may seem compelling, this research, as well as more recent research, initiatives, and projects stemming from it, are frequently based upon deficit models of those in poverty and a blame the victim set of language ideologies. To engage in broader debates around these critical issues, in this Journal of Linguistic Anthropology forum, a range of linguistic anthropological and education scholars discuss, problematize, and reconceptualize the quote language gap in relation to broader issues of inequity, language policy, home and school ideologies, and culture of schooling, moving towards additive models of children's language environments that acknowledge and value the richness of diverse modes of interacting in the home. This forum on the language gap is a continuation of concerted efforts by the American Anthropological Association, Committee for Human Rights, Society for Linguistic Anthropology Task Group on Language and Social Justice, to heighten awareness of and critically engage with these circulating ideologies and problematic practices. Eric Johnson and I had the privilege of co-editing this forum, working with incredible linguistic anthropology and education scholars, Shirley Bryce Heath, Teresa McCarty, Eleanor Oakes, Tamar Kremer Sadlik, Susan Bloom, Anacelia Zentea, Jonathan Rosa, Nelson Flores, H. Sami Alim, and Django Paris. Language and Social Justice Task Group members have spearheaded public outreach efforts on this and a range of other language and social justice topics, including the I word, sports mascot names, and language-related questions in the U.S. Census. Members of the task group have published pieces in the Huffington Post, and we're continuing to work on relevant media pieces, op-eds, and conference panels and presentations. As this national conversation continues, work remains to be done. Scholars from a range of departments at UCLA came together in April 2014 around rethinking linguistic proficiency, quantitative and qualitative approaches to language in childhood, highlighting the diversity of perspectives on this important set of issues. A New Yorker piece in 2015 discussed in detail the variety of ideologies and actions related to the language gap. The Los Angeles Times in April 2015 highlighted the language gap in relation to new research that is founded on some of these problematic ideologies. And a recently publicized Emerging Scholars program with seemingly good intentions related to the language gap seems to draw upon much of this deficit model research. We are continuing our work to reconceptualize the language gap as a step towards a broader view of individuals, families, and communities, and we invite you to this very important conversation.